Math 152. Uh, we're looking at section 3.2, part 1. We're looking at um, integrals of trig functions. Before we get started, I want you to start maybe considering, if you haven't done so yet, developing a lookup page for yourself. Kind of stuff that you can look up, um, that you, you, know, you can remember some of it, but sometimes you just have to check. It's a good thing to do. It also helps with memory. And I'm going to suggest you have a couple pieces of them. One of them being the relationships, like just some trig relationships. And then actual integral. And some of these we already know. We know the integral of sine is a negative cosine plus some constant. Right? So the integrals that way. We also know the integral of cosine is sine. And if you don't want to write the plus C, of course, you don't have to. Uh, one thing I want you to remember about your integrals is this is also a derivative lookup, right? Like going this way is an integral and going this way is the derivative. So I can I got two little pieces of information together here. Another thing I want to remind you about trig that you may remember is that Pythagorean relationship. Basically that sine squared uh, plus cosine squared equals one which subtracts sine squared from both sides, tells us that cosine squared is one minus sine squared, or subtract cosine squared from both sides, sine squared is one minus cosine squared. And these are relationships that we will pull on to help us uh, do some of our integration with, with trig. So let's just take a look about how we might go about doing uh, this integral right here, sine to the fourth of x times cosine of x dx. Remember, cosine and sine, these are functions, right? And the x is being input into cosine. It's not sine times x. I may not write those parentheses each time. But this is uh, x gets put into sine and then taken to the fourth power. x gets put into cosine, right? The angle gets put in. It spits out some ratio. Um, to do this, I'm probably going to have to do some substitution, right? Like let u equal something and let du equal something and substitute them in. And I know that if I take the derivative of sine, I get cosine. So let's let u be sine. And du then is going to be cosine of x dx. So that feels pretty good. So that means now I have integral of u to the fourth. Cosine x dx is du. Look at that. And then uh, I know how to do that. I know how to do that. And now I can plug my sine back in here. So this is one fifth sine to the fifth uh, x plus. Cool. Let's do another one. So looking at this one, I've got that lone little sine there, right? And cosine to the third power. And I know that the um, derivative of cosine is, is negative sine. I do that substitution. I let u be cosine, and du would then would be negative sine x dx. So I have u cubed. Oh, I got to negate it, right, to make up for that negative, because negative du equals sine. And then uh, that all goes, so that's du. And I know how to do that, right? Plug u back in, it's negative. Cosine to the fourth power plus some constant. So notice uh, one of the things that we did was we had this lone cosine, so we, we kind of thought that's probably going to be our du, or this lone sine was going to be our du, and then we could substitute into that where that power is at. So let's do another one that's a little more tricky. Now, as I look at this one, I notice that I don't have just like the single... Um, trig function like here I just had sine to the first or cosine to the first and I kind of want that for my for my du piece right whatever my substitution is going to be so I think I'm going to be a little bit clever this this u cubed if I wrote this uh, this sine cubed if I wrote this as sine squared times sine And those are all multiplied together, of course. Now I have this single sine, and I have this cosine. So I'm, I'm thinking I want u to be cosine. d will be sine dx. But this sine squared is giving me a little bit of grief because, like, that would be part of my substitution. Okay. Well, let's go back to 
our lookup table. Let's go back to the, these trig relationships that we know. And I know that, that sine squared, I can write it in terms of cosine. It's one minus cosine squared. Oh, glorious. Okay, so I'm gonna, sub, I'm gonna substitute this in for that sine squared. So this sine squared, I know that's one minus cosine squared. And that's again, a Pythagorean relationship. So now I have this, and you know, I could distribute that into there now, or I could just do my substitution right now. If I say u is cosine, my du is taken care of because the uh, derivative of cosine is negative sine. So let's do some substitution then. Um, so this would be u squared times 1 minus u squared. I can end up just distributing that u into there. And negative, so this is going to be negative, sine x dx is du. Which, so this is the same as distribute that into there u squared minus u to the fourth, and I know how to do that, negative. I'm going to put that negative into there, and that turns this negative and turns this positive. So I have that. It was that little clever move. Uh, so this would be one-fifth, uh, u to the fifth minus one-third, u to the third plus some constant. But I'm not done because i got to figure out what u was. Cosine. So this would be one-fifth. Cosine to the fifth plus my constant. And there it is. Uh, what I'd like you to notice is the strategy here that we wanted a, one of these singletons, like we wanted a single sign. Um, and notice if I tried to do that with a cosine where I had this even power, I would have a little bit of trouble because um, I, I, that would just be one plus sine squared. It's not going to give me a single cosine. If, if I'm going to do u substitution for either sine or cosine, I need the other one to, to, to substitute the du in for that part. Let's do one more that's, uh, that looks a little bit like this. It's going to be a lot like it, actually. So uh, looking at this one, I notice I have a sine squared. I could substitute in like the 1 minus cos squared for it, but that like does away with sine entirely. I need a cosine. So I have this odd-powered cosine. So I'm going to take advantage of that odd power. I'm going to rewrite this as a cosine squared, oops, I forgot my x there, times cosine x, times sine squared x, dx. And maybe juggle things around a little bit, Move, just swap these two, right? So I have a cos x, dx. And now I have this cosine x, dx. So that's, I'm thinking that's going to be my du. And then I could, I have sine. I want this cosine in terms of sine. Well, sine squared is 1 minus cosine. And sine, uh, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So let's substitute that in. It's almost the same problem. And I'm going to let u equal sine of x. du equals cos x dx. And then I'm going to substitute, do my substitution, 1 minus u squared times u squared times du. And I'm on my way. Like, you can, you can do the rest of that. So, thinking about how I can break these up, how to treat them. Um, your book has um, a problem strategy, but uh, a solving strategy, and I'll show it to you. But really, it comes to me like I want to strategize so I have a single cosine dx or a single sine dx. So we haven't talked about this third possibility yet. We'll talk about that shortly. But notice it says if it's in this type, if k is odd, right, if sine, if this part's odd, like if that's a three, break it up. Then you get a single sign, and then you substitute in u equals cosine. But if j is odd, if this is the odd one, uh, break that one up, right? Like, and then you have a single cosine. Uh, let u equal that for your substitution. And you can do it multiple times if you need to do it multiple times. Like, if you have the fifth power, you could write it as cubed um, squared, or then you could write that as one of them squared squared. We'll talk about this uh, example. So talking about that second part, I'm going to add a couple trig relationships here to help us with this next part. And these parts um, are, are double angle 
relationships that you would have seen in, in trig and in pre-calc. So sine squared x, we know we can write it in terms of cosine squared x, but we can write it just in terms of cosine as well. It's uh, 1 minus cosine twice the angle uh, over 2. And the cosine version of this is the same except it's plus instead of minus. And just to note, I could, I could break that up. These are both divide, divided by 2, right? I could write this as 1 half minus cos 2x over 2, or this one this way. And I hesitate even to say it, but like, don't even think about canceling those 2s. That's doing that is, it, like the 2x is getting plugged into the cosine. That's, that's I mean, I, I see the visual appeal of it, but it doesn't, it's not a thing. So, so don't do it. Okay, so we've got these tools that we can use also to rewrite things if we need them. So let's deal with, we were talking about if those powers are odd. What if we just had that, sine squared? So notice, like, if I just have sine squared, I could rewrite it with the Pythagorean identity. We're not going to want to do this. Because if I do that, I get a cosine, but I lose my sine. Like, I need both of them. Um, if, if I'm going to do substitution, um, the squaring is the, is the issue. So I'm not going to do substitution. I'm not going to do that uh, trig relationship. But what I will do is I'm going to go over here and steal one of these half angle formulas. I know that sine squared is the 1 minus cos 2x over 2. So I have this even power. don't have any odd powers. So I'm going to rewrite this as this. And it's twice that angle. So since that's x, this is 2x. And then notice it's just cosine. That's, that's good. If it's cosine squared, I have trouble. But just cosine, I know how to take the integral of that. Remember, this is 1 half minus cosine of dx. How about I split this into two pieces? Well, I know this integral is 1 half x minus this integral. You might just see it. If not, do a little substitution. Let u equal 2x. Uh, du then equals 2dx. So that means that 1 half du is dx. So I would rewrite this as the integral of 1 half. There's my 1 half times 1 half dx. 1 half du and then cosine of u. Those are times. So this is a 1 fourth. I can pull it out of there. And I know that the integral of cosine is uh, sine. And then u was 2x. So I can put that back into there. And there's that one. So notice in these, we're, we're patching up that idea that we have an even powered trig function, sine or cosine, without the other one in there to, uh, to make up for it. Right, like this is a different question than this. Because in this one, I just do my substitution straight right away. U equals sine and du equals cos x dx, right? Like I have this cosine to fill in that du spot. Here I don't. And since that's not odd, I can't substitute to get to it, to get to one or the other. Um, so there's that. I'm going to do another example of this with just cosine. It's squared. It's an even power, so I'm not going to be able to pull out uh, anything and, and bring in a sine dx for that substitution. So I'm going to do that that double angle. Go over to my little lookup page. I know that cosine is one plus cosine x over two. I rewrite this right now as as this. And remember, this is a this is two times that angle. So this is a three x. So this would be a six x. Break this up so I've got that. We know that this is going to be one half x. Uh, we know this too. Like, well, you could get there with that u substitution if you don't see it, but it's going to end up being one twelve plus the constant. Did I have my constant in the last one? Oh, I did. Phew. Great. There it is. It's lovely, isn't it? It's really, it's really great. I do a couple more problems like this, and then we will close this up. So let's look at this. And just to remind you of the mechanics of what's going on here. Again, I'm not I'm not doing those parentheses. 
Uh, but this is x getting plugged into cosine, then taken to the fifth power. We're trying to find. Now, I don't have um, a sine or a cosine to conveniently, you know, substitute things into here. But I think I can get there. I think I can. I think I can make one. I don't have a sine. If this was an even power, I'd be. I'd be okay. I could just go uh, from there. All right, here we go. I'm going to think of this as cosine cubed times cosine squared. And I did that because this cosine squared, I can use a Pythagorean identity and rewrite this as 1 minus sine squared, bringing a sine in. So now I have both cosine. These are multiplied together. So I'm going to distribute this into here. So I have integral cosine cubed x minus cosine cubed x. All right, so how about I break this into two? So notice this has both the cosine cubed and the sine squared in it. Uh, we actually did a problem like this up, it was very similar to this up top. Um, so I'm going to do each of these separately, and it's going to be minus that whole thing. So I'm going to break up that cosine cubed into cosine times cosine squared. And then I have my single cosine and my dx. I can kind of juggle things around here, write this as cosine x dx. So my substitution, I know my du is going to be this. So I'm, I want to get everything else in terms of sine. Cosine squared, Pythagorean, I can look over at my I look up chart, or I can remember that this is 1 minus sine squared. And again, keep track. However, you need to keep track that you're subtracting this whole thing, right? Because it, it came from here. And so then here I could use my, use my u substitution, u sine. So du is cosine x dx. So I'll get the integral of 1 minus u squared times u squared du. And I know how to do that. So it's going to be minus that whole thing. And then with this cosine cubed, I have this odd power. I, you know, I did one similar to this earlier too. I think um, I could split this into um, cosine squared times cosine. So there gives me that gives me my cos dx. So my u substitution here is also going to be sine because there's my there's my du. Rewrite this in terms of sine. Again, that there's my uh, Pythagorean identity one minus sine squared. Notice that's times that that cosine of x. So right here, let's let u equal sine, du equal cos x dx. So this would be 1 minus u squared, and all that is just my du. And so I'm on my way, right? Like, so this would be u minus 1 third u cubed minus, let's distribute that into there u squared minus u to the fourth. So one half, no, one third u cubed minus one fifth u to the fifth. If I subtract this whole thing, that district that negative goes here, and it also goes here, making that plus. These u's are the same substitution sign. So I'll just keep going from here. Uh, one third of them minus one third of them is two thirds of them. And since u was sine, sine cubed sine to the fifth plus c look at that gorgeous thing all right so that is the basic idea again what i want you to notice is all this is telling us is when they're even we can use these double angle formulas when one of them's odd whichever one is odd you break it up so you get a singleton, and then you can use your u substitution. And uh, that is the basic idea. Again, I really strongly encourage you to start a page that, that you can start to look up things. Uh, we will add a bunch of integrals over here for uh, more trig stuff as well. We're going we're gonna to next time talk about um, doing it with like secant and tangent, and then we'll start to work about ways we can use trig to do some substitution. Give these a good go, uh, feel comfortable with them, and uh, send me any questions that you have.